Join us on our website at www.thegrandview.org and get more information about our show. There you can download our free book, Everything You Need to Know About Outdoor Painting. spend a couple of days here at Olympic National Park and there's so many beautiful places to paint. You've got the high alpine mountains and you've got these wonderful beaches. I knew once I stepped foot on this beach that this was the place I was going to paint. This place is absolutely beautiful. It just says Pacific Northwest Coast with these beautiful rocks and these formations and these wonderful trees coming down to the beach. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. I'm just going to very quickly sketch them in. These wonderful trees. Now I do like all of these rocks over on the left hand side. And I want to show you by adding just more turpentine and using the same color I can actually create a little bit of value for my background mountain. Okay now with the base of my hillside done I'm going to sketch in my lagoon. And what I want to pay attention to are the reflections in the lagoon. There's an area of the lagoon that's a little darker and there's an area of the lagoon that's a little lighter. These are all my dark reflections in my lagoon in the foreground. And now I'm going to add a lot more turpentine to my color. And I'm going to go up and down in my light area. Now I'm going to lay in a darker version of my color. Again, this is the burnt sienna cobalt blue. I'm going to lay in the base for all of my foliage on the right. These wonderful bushes coming down to this rocky shore. And now with that done, we're going to start actually laying in the sketch for our foreground trees. Now I'm going to make sure that these trunks are exactly where I want them. So I'm going to spend some time really looking at my model here. Okay, now I'm going to do a little bit of this beach in the foreground in front of my lagoon. Lots of turpentine here. Just very quickly paint in your beach. This will direct the viewer right into my central focal area. Now with all of my sketching, we're ready to start painting. I'm going to squeeze out white onto my palette. And I want to squeeze out quite a bit so that I don't have to constantly be refreshing my paint. What you first want to do is you want to add a little bit of gray into your sky so that you can adjust it to be either warmer or cooler than what you have on your painting. If you look very closely into fog, you'll notice that the fog has all different types of values. I do want to bring the viewer to the center area. In that area, I'm going to add more yellow and I'm going to take this light color and I'm going to brush it into my sketch. And my sketch will actually be the base for my, my foliage and my trees. I'm going to paint right over my sketch for my trees in the foreground. Since these will be fairly opaque on top of my sky. Okay, now with our sky done, we're ready to start working on our main rock area in the distance. Now you want to make sure that the value is correct. So what you want to do is adjust the color back and forth till you think you've got the right value. And the good way to judge that is actually paint this color right up to the sky. And now with my back island done, I'm going to work on the next row of rocks. These rocks lie right along the base of the beach. I'm going to do this relatively quickly, just flat values. And then I'm going to step back to see whether or not these values are correct. And while I'm at it, I'm going to lay a little bit of my beach in. I'm going to put in a little hint of the water also between my rocks. Now I'm working the beach around my sketch for my logs. 
my driftwood in the background. Now what I want to do is take this exact same color and start painting the shoreline on the opposite side of my lagoon. I'm purposely going to add a brighter light right in the center. I want my light to hit these rocks a little brighter. Now with my shoreline done, I'm going to take that exact same color and add lots of white to it. What I want to create is a real, real bright light color for my reflection from my sky. Lots of paint and up and down strokes. Now as my water comes more to the foreground, I'm going to introduce more gray. This helps keep the viewer towards the center of my painting. And this lagoon has a greenish warm color to it. And now with my lagoon painted in as a base, I'm going to switch to a palette knife. And just drag the knife very carefully across your water, horizontally. Remember the reflections were done vertically. Your highlights are done horizontally. Every one of these little lines that you put in indicate a little ripple of light reflecting the fog. And then very lightly brush over with your knife just to take the edge off. And now I want to put in a little bit more gray. Bring the edge of my lagoon back in. And now with our lagoon done, we're ready to start painting in our driftwood. We're going to use the same brush and we're going to mix up a dark version of gray. I'm changing between grays and brown grays, pretty much picking up anything that I have on my palette. And these are just the shadow areas from my driftwood. I'm going to put highlights in on top of them. And again, we're putting these in a little different than what we see, just because we want to create movement. If you notice, we have this strong line here, and then we have these lines here. I'm going to, to put in some lines in this direction to help point the viewer into the painting. And some of these driftwood logs have branches sticking out of them. Now to the right there's one driftwood log that's laying all by itself. It's a little bit lighter than the, the beach. So I want to make sure I add enough white to it so it stands out, but not too much white because I want to keep it in the shadow. And now with the base of the driftwood in, we're going to start putting the highlights in. There's just so many logs laying down here. Little tiny strokes. Now with that done, what we want to do is create a little bit more texture. So I'm going to use the same color, but I'm going to use my palette knife. The thicker paint is on your canvas, the brighter it appears. So if you want really strong highlights, apply the paint very, very thick. The longer ones, we want to drag the knife a little longer. Notice the texture it's giving gives that real weathered look, as if this driftwood had been adrift for a hundred years. And now with the driftwood done, what we want to do is start working on the foliage on the right hand side. Now just using the corner of the brush and just a circular motion, give the illusion of some of these beautiful bushes going up the side of our cliff. More yellow and white little sense of highlight coming in. Another interesting stroke is taking this brush and just pulling up with it, laying the flat of the brush down on my canvas and yanking up. You can also take a little of this bright color and load up your brush fairly well and dab the brush on. It's all these little techniques. And so you get the illusion of leaves that are closer. See how important it is to get those darks in? It's all in the first 10 minutes of your painting. 
Behind these trees, I don't want a hard line. I'm going to actually blend these greens right into my sky. That way when we do the, the trunks of the trees here, you won't see the edge of the mountain and you'll really see these trees stand out all by themselves. Just follow the edge of the tree all the way up. There's a few trees in here while we're at it that are lighter. Now let's take advantage and put in some of the branches. Okay, now with our trunks in, we are ready to start putting in the foliage. Now I'm going to switch to a fan brush. Now, a lot of people don't know how to control a fan brush. Use just a corner of the brush. Remember, you want to make sure you follow the shape of the tree. Creating a little bit of highlight color with a little more yellow and blue. And now we're ready to start working on our foreground trees. I'm going to switch to my small detail brush. Use a lot of turpentine. And put in the little branches using exactly the same stroke as we did, start putting in the foliage. At this point, spend a little bit of time getting in all the little details. And now with our foreground trees done, we're ready to sign the painting and conclude this magnificent day that we had at Olympic National Park. If you like to take your painting to the next level, regardless at whatever level you are, please feel free to contact me at 415-606-9074. Expanded instructional DVDs that feature an hour-long demonstration of today's painting and other paintings in the series are available at the Grandview by calling 1-800-511-1337. Join us on our website, thegrandview.org, and get more information about our show. There you can download our free book, Everything You Need to Know About Outdoor Painting, along with a free diagram of today's subject. Expanded instructional DVDs that feature an hour-long demonstration of today's painting and other paintings in the series are available at the Grandview by calling 1-800-511-1337. Join us on our website, thegrandview.org, and get more information about our show. There you can download our free book, Everything You Need to Know About Outdoor Painting, along with a free diagram of today's subject. PaintingFromNature.com a website for artists seeking inspiration, advice, and knowledge to master painting from nature. PaintingFromNature.com